talk. I went to church, and uh, I noticed that they're using the UV lights in in the church everywhere that I go. I've been to different states, and and I see it in the buses, the airplanes when I travel. The UV lights, the blue lights, like that suit back there that the blue boy is wearing. Uh, I see them, and even the churches now I see them. I see them over there in the marina. I've seen them on boats. I've seen them in buildings. I've seen them on the street. I've seen them on airplanes and buses. Uh, they're popping up everywhere. And and now in the church, I've, I've seen this uh, UV lights. And I think it's it's uh, they're conditioning everybody, even Christians, to get used to this as something normal. And um, but I, as you can see, the images that I I put forth, and I'm sitting in church. Shalom. Kohlaimna. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Kwakadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you in another lesson, observing the signs of the times. Really didn't come up with an exact title yet, but these are some of the signs of observing the last days. Let me show you a picture. I was out and about today, and I took this photo, and I'm going to tie into the significance of this photo as to why it is important. Now, what do you see here? Clouds do not have flat bottoms. Now, most of us that have been following these lessons for several years, know that the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs, they use, they use, excuse me, <clears throat> they use advanced cloud cloaking technology where they are able to conceal themselves in the clouds. There's no such thing as a cloud with a flat bottom. Okay, now when I was growing up, I saw what was called cumulus clouds, and they looked like cotton or cotton balls. And, and something in certain places, they looked like they had been pulled apart. Cumulus clouds, like cotton balls, were different shapes. But this right here is not normal. So why do I bring this photo up? The global elite's major chess move is the mandate being marked by this system, by this business enterprise, the components of the beast, where buying and selling will not be possible without accepting the terms of selling our soul to this system. So these are some very exciting times that we're living in in these last days. And the Bible says when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard. Let's examine that scripture. There's something I want to show here. We're going to do a slight deep dive into it. A deep dive. Let's go to Isaiah 59. <clears throat> the book of Isaiah, chapter 59. Let's go to verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, 
the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Let's look at this word standard. Then everything's going to tie together. As the wire showed you, these chariots that are hiding themselves in the clouds. Standard. We have a spiritual eye and the spirit of discernment. Standard comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H5127. Noose. Noose. Check this out. To escape. Escape. Abate. Deliver. Away. Make to flee. Put to flight. So the elect have flight tickets to be delivered out of here. Right at the brink of major nuclear devastation. The elect are going to be caught up into the chariots of the chambers of the Lord. See, put to flight, to hide. This is beautiful. To what? To hide. Look at these pictures again. No such thing as a regular cloud with a flat bottom. Are you crazy? See, let's go here. <clears throat> go to Isaiah. I'm trying to remember where it's at. Isaiah. I think it's 29. Nope. One moment. 26. Isaiah 26. Let's go to verse 19. The dead men shall live together with my dead body. Shall they arise, awake, and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. The dead in Yahawashai are going to be raised up first. And you're going to have some that are going to be raised up to be judged, just to be consumed in the fire. That's what the Bible says, and they shall know after death by pain. Go to verse 26, excuse me, verse 20, Isaiah 26, verse 20, come my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee, hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed, the nuclear Holocaust, which means burnt offering, until that pass over. Enter into what chambers? There's the picture again. Promise you I'm not making this stuff up. And I saw this picture on the route that I take to go to get to cut my hair down lower, the barbershop. I don't shave my head, okay? I just get it cut low. Let's go to Isaiah. So those chambers are the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. Isaiah 26, verse 21. Or behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her her slain. So we're going to come in with this thing here. This, which is an abomination. It is against our law to puncture our skin or put anything into our body that's a foreign substance. That's not natural. That's not from the, from the herbs. Well, that's unnatural. So these scriptures connect together. When this thing gets mandated, 
So this is a critical part in end times Bible prophecy. It cannot be omitted or downplayed or written off or assumed away. It does not work that way. When we study the Bible, and I'm a student of the Bible, we learn that none of the prophecies fail. So this picture was amazing, and it really made my day. I was on the phone with um, Brother Karab out of Richmond, Virginia, and I saw this, and I had to slow down at the stoplight to get this photo. Let's go here. And this is the symbol. So they know this thing is coming. Now what scripture comes to mind when you see this? Should be Revelations chapter 12 at least. And there was a great war in heaven. This is the symbol or the emblem from the office of the director of national intelligence. The aviation branch. Look how they're showing the chariot of the Lord intercepting the angels of Satan, the militaries of the United Nation under the international bankers, the, the Luciferians, the 13 Illuminati families. They control the United Nations. So that's what this is getting into. And there was a great war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. So John on the island of Patmos is seeing an aerial fight and an epic intergalactic battle, ram against ram, outer space and in the skies and a ground fight. Just thought I'd share that. There's another shot right here. And this is amazing. So listen, the elites know what's going on. They know. They're not stupid. Go here. So we're supposed to only bear the stripes or the marks of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> which are the characteristics of the elect. Go to Romans 6, verse 13. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Now, this is heavy. Are not supposed to allow any intrusive devices into our body. Matter of fact, let me go show where I'm getting at. Uh, not that one. Let's go here to Leviticus. Leviticus 19. Let's go to verse 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. No carvings, no markings, not even tattoos, not even stamps being marked as a commodity, basically a human barcode system under the beast being traded, tracked, and enabling purchasing power with this mark. So this thing is linked into an abomination. Humans are being literally turned into stamped and tracked purchase items with being coded and marked and stamped. Matter of fact, every item you buy in the store has a has a unit number, which is a tracking system to the retailer. A
purchase item number. So let's look up this word. Make any cuttings. We're going to look that up. Cuttings comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H8296, Seret, Seret, and second entry, Sareteth, Sareteth. Incision, cut. There's another one. Um, let me see here, one moment. I think it's Leviticus 21. Let's see here. Here we go. All right. Leviticus 21, verse 5. Yeah, it's pretty much the same, same word. Cuttings or cut. Go oh, here. Romans 6, verse 12. Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof, being tempted in these last days. That temptation coming upon all the world, not being able to buy or sell. Being tempted by covetousness rather than the sacrifice unto our Lord. See, let's go to Romans 6 and 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto the Most High as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto the most high. So our members as instruments of righteousness, our body, which starts with our physical body and it expands over to the body of work, the brotherhood. See, Romans 6 and 14. For sin shall have no dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. So if we follow the will of the Father, then we're not subject to the penalty of the law. So our body are, is supposed to be used as instruments of righteousness, not being pierced and pricked by, this, this, by Satan or by his mark, by his phallus symbol. See, let's go to Romans 7, verse 22. And this is Paul speaking for idol, <coughs> excuse me, Romans 7, Verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So this flesh is a prison and the mark or the MOTB, it's in triple or extra security lock, placing us in eternal bondage. And I know that makes sense if we're thinking about it through the spirit. So I know many of you have heard of extra security or maximum security. My goodness, I'm getting a brain lock brain dead. So this being marked by this B system puts us in a maximum prison of bondage under this B system. 
See, Romans 7 and 23 again. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. And we read that, not pricking or making cuttings or piercings in our flesh. <laughs> See, Romans 6, verse 13 again. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield ye yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto the Most High. Let's look up this word, instruments. Instruments. Comes from the Greek. Strong's G, 3696. Hoplon. Hoplon. This is beautiful. A utensil or tool. Armor. Especially offensive for war. Instrument. So the mighty men of King David must keep our vessels clean, pure, made to be changed, upgraded. So this old shell is going to be renovated and built back better. These mortal bodies are going to be put off and the hopeful elect of the tabernacle of David are going to be upgraded with those new supernatural bodies, extraterrestrial. That's a part of the promises and be made into a weapon. See, that word is right here. Weapon. Let's look that up. So the elect are going to become instruments. Let me see. I think that's in Isaiah 41, if I'm not mistaken. just want to get right to it. Isaiah 41. A new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. See, let's go here. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 41. Let's go down to verse 14. Isaiah 41, verse 14. Fear not, thou worm, Jacob, and ye men of Israel. I will help thee, saith the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff, the governments of the nations and their domain of rulership, land, air, sea, and the outer firmament is going to be cast down to the ground. My new, upgraded, extraterrestrial, walking machinations of war, the mighty men of the house of David. So our temples must be prepared for the upgrade, for the renovations, for the change. Let's go here to Galatians chapter 6. Book of Galatians chapter 6, verse 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. Let's look at this word, marks. The hopeful elect are being prepared for a change. To put on the new holy, righteous garments. 
Let's look at this word, marks, of Yahweh Shai. Comes from the Greek. Strong's G 4742, stigma. Stigma. Incise or punch. Recognition of ownership. A stamp or seal from Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. That's that recognition of ownership. See? Scar of service. Why you think we use the term in the Army, Marines, Navy, Air Force? He earned another stripe. So we are being afflicted and beaten with the stripes of men. Every time a promotion comes in the military, they say that that soldier or that sergeant earned another stripe. Even the military understand that through adversity, adversity, affliction, hard times, a rigid, straight and narrow path, then comes the reward, the promotion. Let's read that again. Wow. Recognition of ownership, a scar of service. That's heavy. So the elect have the characteristics of our king. This is beautiful. Let's look at this word. Characteristic. Characteristics. Attribute. Attributes. Quality or feature regarded as characteristic or an inherent part of someone or something. Inherently, trademarks or hallmarks of the king. Feature. Feature. A distinctive attribute or aspect of something. This is beautiful. Oh, I like this one. Distinction. Distinction. So the elect are a royal bloodline, a holy priesthood. Distinction. A difference or contrast between similar things or people. So the elect are being separated from the profane. A distinct class. Elect. Let's get one more. Hallmark. A distinctive feature, especially one of excellence. That's beautiful. A holy priesthood, a royal bloodline of nobility, the cream of the crop, the Israel of the Most High. See, we read that. Let's go back to it. Galatians 6, verse 16. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The Israel of the Most High comprises of the elect, which starts with the tabernacle of David, followed by the remnant. And as many as walk according to this rule, Peace be on them and mercy upon the Israel of God. From henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, the stripes of affliction, servitude, being relegated into a servant class, and the adversity, the fiery trial of affliction. Okay, get ready to close this out. I think we've beat a dead horse to death. Let's go to Leviticus 21. Leviticus 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head, 
neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cuttings in their flesh. Cuttings in the flesh comes from the Hebrew Strong's H8296 Seret Seret and second entry Sareteth Sareteth Yeah, we looked at it already. Incisions. Oh, this is beautiful. Process and techniques of producing, forming, or tracing a pattern, text, or other usually linear motif by cutting, carving, or engraving. So this is a system of tracking using global positioning system and radio frequency technology. I can't go into detail any layers beneath that, but the hopeful elect understand what this is tied to. Okay? The hokey poke. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of his son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad in double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. We got next, Lord willing. Hopefully, this has been an edifying lesson. Kwam Yasharela, Kwam Yasharela, and Abad Babao, Barakatam, Shalom.